I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with Sarah Meese, who is the Teacher of the Year for the California Charter School Association. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So you are a 7th and 8th grade math and science teacher. Yes. And tell me where you teach. I teach at the California Montessori Project and we have seven different campuses and I teach at our Fair Oaks campus, which is also called our, our American River campus. Okay. For people who don't know what, they've heard of Montessori but not, aren't sure what it means, kind of explain Montessori. Yeah, Dr. Maria Montessori is the, the founder, I guess, of the Montessori education model. And I think what most people are familiar with are the work that she did in the preschool and infant world. We see a lot of Montessori preschools around. And um, what's unique about CMP and what we do at the California Montessori Project is our, our program goes all the way through K-8. So I teach the seventh and eighth grade at our K-8 campuses. So a lot of Dr. Montessori's philosophies are, are, are based on planes of development. So a lot of the different methods that we bring in education are are based on where the students are developmentally. So um, the students are grouped in different age groupings, so six to nine um, ages, nine to 12, and um, 12 to 14 is that secondary um, grade level that, that I teach. So within those different grades, you see um, their multi-age classrooms. So you see students from you know, first through third grade together and fourth through sixth grade in those developmental planes. And then in middle school, it's that seventh and eighth grade um, combined multi-age classrooms. And the curriculum really um, plays on where they are developmentally and really supports where they are as they're growing as well. Okay, so seventh and eighth grade math and science. Yes. Uh, so we're at a time now where there's a big emphasis on STEM and math and science. Mm -hmm. So for a teacher in that field, that's got to be pretty exciting. It's very exciting, and um, just everything that's going on right now. I I love going to professional developments and everything that's going on um, with science and technology. Um, I feel really plays into Dr. Montessori's different philosophies of you know reaching out and being more global citizens and how we can connect with um, outside of the classroom that it goes uh, that our learning extends beyond the four walls of our classroom and a lot of her methodologies really align with the next generation science standards and um, all of the different technology and engineering standards out there which is really great so it's something that you know we've been doing already so it's a really great celebration of you know being able to do that now and all the opportunities for teachers to to develop and attend different trainings and see how we can do that more and provide that for our students. And you had mentioned uh, professional development. Um, mm -hmm. That's obviously very important for teachers, yes. but in a, in a math and science field, especially science things, updating changes in technology, I mean, how valuable is it and how hard is it to keep up? Um, I think that it's, it's exciting. I think it depends on how you want to approach that. And I think that if you take the idea that you need to do everything because there's so much out there. So I think as teachers, that's where we need to edit a little bit and you know not get too overwhelmed with um, the rapid change of everything and technology, which I think is very easy to do. And I've fallen victim of that too, of just there's so much wonderful stuff out there. But at the end of the day, how can I make this you know little piece of information from a training relevant? So starting you know small scale with just you know one piece or one you know method that I learned from a training and start with that and then see where that grows and then try another one. So I think that's been one of my biggest lessons is, you know, I'm so eager to be cutting edge and know what's going on out there, but you can't do it all in, you know, even a school year. So um, setting goals for yourself and trying to, you know, implement everything on a smaller scale, I think makes it more manageable and, you know, less overwhelming because it's exciting, but it can be very intimidating if you let it. Well, you have that balance between what's shiny and new and, mm -hmm. and the foundational stuff that you really have to pay attention to. Yes, absolutely. So not losing sight of, you know, with the with technology brings a whole nother set of expectations. So, you know, teaching the students how to use technology as a tool and that it's a resource and, you know, how to use that appropriately at the same time of, you know, just establishing those different um, routines in your classroom and technology is almost like a whole nother beast that you need to make sure that they understand that technology is a tool and how to use it appropriately and how to use it as a resource and you know as an adult we use technology all the time and it can be a really valuable tool but if it's not taught then students are just I think just innately wired to want to try to um, you know 
work around different systems and everything. So modeling that and um, making sure that the students are see that value that technology is something that is amazing if you use it appropriately. Well, it is a, uh, such a big part of you know our culture now, mm -hmm. and for the younger people, they've really have kind of grown up with it. You know, right. Uh, for older folks like myself, it's it's all relatively new learning. But for a lot of kids, it's just been a part of as long as they can remember. Exactly, and in a lot of ways though, they haven't been taught. And again, mm -hmm. I think that's where teachers can be really valuable in showing that the education and that the tools that we use, sorry, with technology um, is not something that you just give them and let them you know, explore and figure out on their own, that it's something that you can show, you know, I think open up doors for them that they didn't realize that can connect them to just being more of a, of a global citizen of not just, you know, looking up things that they think are cool, but there's so much more value and that you can connect with w the world on a bigger level and just how, how that could be used as a really valuable tool if it's taught mm -hmm. appropriately. So what are, what are some of the big challenges that you face as a teacher today? Lots of challenges. I think that, you know, just with all the changes in, in education with our standards and, um, you know, just making sure that we're still connecting with our students is something that I, I find a lot of value in. So, you know, still making sure that with everything changing that we don't lose sight of um, connecting with our students and, you know, making sure that, of course, we're meeting standards and, and keeping up with all of the the trends and issues that are going on in education. And at the same time though, when I say connecting with our students, there's so many influences they have now. Mm -hmm. um, just especially for me teaching middle school, adolescents are so influenced by, you know, different celebrities and, mm -hmm. and so much as they're trying to find their place in the world. So I feel like um, as educators, that's something that is more important for us to, you know, help to teach what it is to be a good person and to be a part of the global community and to, to just care and contribute and that what we do matters and who you are matters and how you conduct yourself is, is really important too. When you're dealing with uh, the academic side and the social emotional side mm -hmm. and you're dealing with, you know, uh, young boys and girls who are becoming young women and men and all those adjustments and so you're right. your teacher and counselor at the same time. Exactly, which is why I think I love middle school so much. And usually I tell people I teach middle school and it's, oh, it's, I mean, it's their first reaction is that's yeah. horrible because I think we've all um, recognized that stage of life as being really hard mm -hmm. because there's a lot of different influences. So that's, I think, what makes my job so rewarding and so um, why I find so much value in it because that is such a formative time. So to be able to be a positive influence and and moral compass for them in, when they're in that very sensitive period in their lives, I feel like is a lot of value to me and brings a lot of rewards. So how long have you been a teacher? This will be my 13th year at the California Montessori Project and I did teach one year at the, through the San Juan Unified School District. Have so. you always wanted to be a teacher? I have. I really? think it's been something that um, my mom was a teacher so I definitely saw that and had that influence and I think at an early age I had a couple of experiences in, in high school helping to coach um, a local Little League softball team because I played softball and um, being part of the yearbook committee and being the editor of the yearbook I would you know help people manage their time and stay organized and meet deadlines and I had to you know effectively communicate all those things and you know with the little ones trying to be patient and um, you know be innovative in my thinking and to be able to improvise. So I think those are all different qualities that, you know, help to lead that path towards wanting to be a teacher at a, at a younger age. And then through my um, program at Sac State, definitely help to nurture that even more. And what is it like to be named as a teacher of the year for your, your association? It's definitely an honor and one that um, I know that I'm one of many amazing teachers out there who are extremely hardworking and innovative and you know to be someone that is representing this very hardworking group of people is something I take very seriously and am, am very humbled by. So um, I don't feel special but I feel like it's a very um, unique opportunity to, to be an ambassador for all the hardworking teachers and especially charter schools and, and Montessori as well to just shine a light to what I do in my little corner of the world in Fair Oaks. Well congratulations to you and we've enjoyed talking with you.
Thank you. We've been speaking with uh, Sarah Meese, who is the Teacher of the Year for 2018 for the uh, California Charter School Association. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.